Hello and welcome back to Rotary Rocketry. Today we're going to be taking a look at a homemade flight computer. So a while back one of our viewers named Dan contacted us and he offered to send us one of his new flight computers. Now this is a project he's been working on for a couple of years. He was clear that he's not really interested in making this for production. He makes it for himself, for his local rocketry buddies, and he offered to send us one for testing as well. And we were happy to take one and we're going to check this out. So let's take a closer look at the board. Right here we've got a Wi-Fi chip. This is Wi-Fi enabled so we can communicate directly with it in the field from our phone. Underneath that that you can't see there are some other circuits on the bottom of that board. Uh, I'm guessing that's where the programmable logic chip is. Right here we've got a little board that has a barometric sensor on it that's going to provide altitude information based upon uh, atmospheric pressure. Up here we have two FETs. Those handle the high power draw that's needed for firing the ejection charges and the ejection charges are connected to this connector here. This can be configured in two different ways. You can either have a drogue parachute that ejects during apogee and then he's got a programmable altitude so you can eject your main parachute at a specific altitude above the ground level or it can be just set for single ejection at apogee which is typically what we do with our parachutes. So the whole thing is very well designed, very well built, looks very professional. We've got two Christmas tree lights here, just temporary. Those simulate the ejection charges. We're going to do some testing on this, and then hopefully a little later we'll actually get to launch this. So we're going to do a vacuum test, and that's a test that I think you should do on every new flight computer that has a barometric sensor. Basically, we've just got a shop vac here. We're going to activate the flight computer. We've got an E-match, which would be used for our ejection charge connected to the main. If we put the vacuum over the barometric sensor, that's going to simulate a significant drop in pressure. So as if the rocket had gone up very high in altitude. When we pull that away, the pressure will increase as if the rocket is now coming back down and then we should fire off the ejection charge. So let's take a look at that. I've got it programmed and all set right now. All right, so that test was perfect. That shows us that the barometric sensor seems to be working properly. Now, I did want to show you he's got this really nice web-based interface. So from here, we can see the status of our ejection charges. We can arm and disarm the flight computer. There's some historical data for the last couple of launches. And we can even test the drogue and main ejection charges to make sure that everything's working properly there. So we've just got the two Christmas tree lights here connected in place of our ejection charges. The computer's armed. If I test the main, and then I can test the drogue. All right, so to mount this in the rocket, uh, we've designed very recently what we call the Apogee nose cone, which we use for the egg timer Apogee flight computer. We modified the lower section of that. It's basically a two-piece system where the bottom piece holds the flight computer and the battery and then simply screws into the bottom of the nose cone. We've flown that a couple times. Now this is a modified version to hold Dan's flight computer. The flight computer simply slides into this slot here. Now it is a little bit larger than, than what we can hold inside the nose cone, but that's simple. We're just going to round the edges of the circuit board here and that will fit perfectly fine. And then we have a little spot here to hold the battery and we'll just put a little hot melt glue to hold that in place securely. So we're going to get all this set up and we're going to get it into one of our Eliminator rockets and we're going to go out and try this. All right, we're here today. It's a beautiful day. We've got our Eliminator rocket. And we're going to be testing Dan's DDD-1000 flight computer. We're going to be using our Super Monkey motor for the launch. This is a PVC case sugar motor. If you want to know how to make this motor, it's really fun and pretty easy to build. We've got a complete tutorial. I'll put a link down in the description on how to make that motor. We're going to get this loaded up and give it a try.
Wow. There, oh, a puff of smoke. There it goes. Deployed. Nice. Well, that was beautiful and absolutely perfect. I want to give a big thanks to Dan for sending us that flight computer. That was really fun. If you're interested in knowing how to make a flight computer, we do have a tutorial video on how to make the Egg Timer Apogee. It's a kit that you purchase and you put it together yourself. It's a very reliable computer. It gives you total altitude for your flight and handles the ejection charge. So I'll put a link down in the description to that if you're interested in making your own flight computer. We're gonna go back to the shop real quick and we're gonna get the data off of the phone and see what we got for an altitude for that launch. So the data retrieved from the flight computer shows us that we flew to an altitude of 1,171 feet, which is a pretty good launch for that rocket and that motor. So again, a big thanks to Dan for sending us his flight computer to check out. I'll put a link down in the description to Dan's YouTube page if you wanna go say hi to him. And also don't forget to hit like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.